Hey, I believe so far you have learned quite a bit about VLOOKUP, the intricacies of VLOOKUP and as a continuation of where do we apply VLOOKUP with true option, I'll show you more examples. Now just a quick recap, when do we apply VLOOKUP with true? When we had three conditions being met by the data, one is a slab based non-continuous values, so it has to be uh, 0, 40, 90 and they must be placed in more than equal to format and ascending order. Now imagine if you are creating a financial model. Yes, a financial model where you have to forecast the rent that you might have to pay over the period of next seven years. So the logic says in case the year of operation is more than equal to zero and it has not touched third year of operation, that means the rent payable is 20,000 per month. In case you touch the third year of operation, which means more than equal to 3, then the rent increases to 24,000. And the moment you touch sixth year of operation, the rent becomes 30,000. So now if I were to apply VLOOKUP, how would it look? Now the moment I write VLOOKUP, you might think for a moment, now why am I not using HLOOKUP? Because the data looks horizontally placed, right? Well. You are going to use VLOOKUP because the value which, which you are going to find the answer, the values in the table are placed vertically and not horizontally. So lookup value year 1, comma, next, choosing the entire table, ensuring I press F4, comma, thereafter, and from the two columns, I must fetch the answer from second column. Now remember, since all three conditions are met, we'll be applying 1 or true, either of the two. So 1 close the bracket and this formula which if I copy paste towards the right hand side you'll notice it quickly based on the year of operation calculates the rent. Now if I change this to let's say 2 let's look at the value under the year number 2 it becomes 24,000 and the last value if I change this to 5 notice from 5th year onwards the 30,000 rent is going to start accruing. So this was another example where we could use this in financial model and it could also be used when you have to allocate the royalty payments over the years based on third year or fifth year or maybe 18th year of operation. Similarly, I have seen several accountants, they prepare a typical MIS report which has to classify the open invoices. That means people or customers specifically who have not paid me any money for a certain bit of time and their invoices are overdue. So they have to classify all the open invoices in few categories of 0 to 30 days overdue, 31 to 60 days overdue and so on and so forth. So before you find out the category under which these open invoice overdue days must be placed, your table must be created. First column, ascending order values, slab base and more than equal to is how they should be read. The second column is where your verdict should be placed. Based on that, if you were to apply VLOOKUP, look for 122 days which is overdue, comma, table array choosing the entire column and as usual, I'm going to press F4 to fix and lock the range, comma, out of the two columns, I must fetch the answer from second column and finally, since the three conditions are in place, I'll be putting one. By the way, in case you did not put any one or true, by default, it considers true. But also keep a note that if you had put in a comma, it will consider it as false. So to avoid this confusion, I'll be very specific by putting 1 for true and 0 for false. Currently, giving you the answer that all these open invoices are classified under respective categories. Now all these slabs which we saw in the previous video and in the current video, not only works with pure numbers, but also with dates. Yes. In case you want to classify all your uh, purchase transaction or invoice dates under these categories, that is quarter 1 of 2014-15, quarter 2 of 2014-15, maybe after 2014-15, in which case I have classified the dates in this benchmark. More than equal to 0, the 0 indicates a very old date. But the moment the invoice date touches 1st April 14, it will be classified as per Indian Fiscal Standard quarter 1 of 2014-15. The moment the invoice date touches 1st July 2014, it will be classified under quarter 2 2014-15. So in this manner, if you are able to create that 
ascending order slabs with more than equal to sine although sine is not important but the meaning is but this only for our reference so once these things are in place I can quickly write a formula which will tell me that these hypothetical dates under what pool must they be classified into so we look up look for 15 September comma then choosing the entire set of data the reference table specifically pressing F4 comma column index number 2 and finally 1 closing the brackets and pressing enter just to check whether it's been working correctly you notice 15 September which is just before 1st of October has been classified as quarter 2 2014 and 15 so this not only work with numbers it can also work with dates in our project examples later point in time we'll see the intricate applications of all this combined we look up with true with all the three conditions let's practice more